Hi, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast, Lesson 5-6, Part 1, Two-Digit Quotients Using Doubles Division. Our learning goal for today is to divide by a two-digit divisor in a problem where the quotient will have two digits. We're using the crazy way this time. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote is by Abraham Lincoln. I do the very best I know how, the very best I can, and I mean to keep on doing so until the end. And he was our president a long time ago in the 1860s. So have some fun looking at all the really great pictures of our President Lincoln. Our learning goals for today are to use doubles division. So check those steps carefully and mark them off. If you have trouble with any of them, put a one next to that one so that you know that you still need to practice that one a little bit more. Here is our first example. Remember, we don't have vocabulary because it's the same vocabulary that we've been using for our division the entire time. Our first example problem is 864 divided by 76. So let's take a look and see how we would work this problem using doubles division. So I've written the problem in the house already for you, 864 divided by 76, and I wrote down our guiding numbers down the side, which are just doubling those numbers and then I've doubled our divisor several times. So we're going to start out looking at what number will go into 8. Nothing does, so we'll put an X over that. We're going to fill up that roof over that room in that house. And 76 will go into 86, so we'll start right there. The number closest to 86 without going over is 76. Remember, we're choosing from the numbers in this column here to go in the house. And so I'll write 76 right below it because we're pretending that 4 isn't there until we've written the 76 in. Now we have an empty place value position, so we'll annex 1, 0. And then we'll look to the number to the left of the 76, which is a 1, and write it here in this column to the right. And annex 1, 0 here, just like we annexed 1, 0 over here. And now we'll subtract. 4 minus 0 is 4. 6 minus 6 is 0, and 8 minus 7 is 1. So we're looking for the closest number to 1, there isn't one, the closest number to 10, there isn't one, and the closest number to 104, which is 76. So we'll write it. We're not annexing any zeros in this case, so we'll take that 1 that's next to it and write it in the 1's column because we didn't annex any zeros there. Now we'll borrow. When I need to borrow for this 4, I'm going to come over to this 10 and just cross out the 10 and write a 9 above it. And then I'll take the 1 that I borrowed from the 10 and write it next to the 4. 14 minus 6 is 8. 9 minus 7 is 2. The closest number to 28 without going over, well, there isn't one. 28 is less than our divisor of 76, so 28 is our remainder. And to get our quotient, we add up the numbers in this column. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. So our quotient is 11. Remember to check that, and you are required to check it, you're going to multiply the divisor times the quotient, which is 76 times 11. And then when you get your answer, you're going to add the remainder of 28 to that. Your answer to that problem in the whole should be 864, the same as your dividend. So here is our first practice problem. 279 divided by 23. Use doubles division to figure that out. Check your work using a multiplication and push play when you're ready. Did you write 12 remainder 3? Let's see how we did that one. So I went ahead and wrote out the doubling for you. We're looking at our first number, and there is no number that will go into 2. So we'll put an x over that. And so we'll look at 27. Closest number to 27 without going over is 23. So we'll write that below it. We have an empty place value position when we actually include that 9. So we'll put annex a 0 there and take the 1 that's to the left of that 23 and annex a 0 to match the 0 we annexed here. Subtract. 9 minus 0 is 9. 7 minus 3 is 4. Closest number to 49 without going over is 46. 
we didn't have to annex any zeros. The number to the left of that is a two. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw lines to connect these. I think it's a good way to make sure you don't leave out a quotient number. Nine minus six is three. Four minus four is zero. Nothing will go into three. So we have a remainder of three. And to find our quotient, we'll add 10 plus two, which is 12. So 12 is our quotient. And to check, we multiply 12 times 23 and get 276 and add our remainder of three, which gives us 279. Make sure you write that out. And that is a picture of the Lincoln family and Abraham Lincoln's top hat. And that's a picture of Mr. Gooding and I were in Ford's theater where Abraham Lincoln was killed. We went to Washington, DC. It was a really fun trip. So there's a picture of Mr. Gooding and I at Ford's Theater. That's where Abraham Lincoln was killed. But it was a really neat trip to take to Washington, D.C. and get to be in that place where he was. There's his top hat there, too. Number two, 710 divided by 63. Go ahead, pause, work the problem, check it, push play when you're ready. Did you write 11 remainder 17? Let's see how we did that one. Make sure that you check your doubling really carefully because if your doubling is off, your whole problem will be off and you'll have done all that work for nothing. So if you need to add numbers together off to the side, do that to make sure that you have the correct answers in your doubling. Let's look at the seven. There is no number that will go into seven, so we'll put an X over it. Now the closest number to 71 without going over is 63 and we'll annex a zero to fill that place value position. Take the one to the left of the 63, write it here, and annex a matching zero there. Now we're gonna subtract. Zero minus zero is zero. One minus three, we can't do. 11 minus three is eight, and six minus six is zero. Now we're looking for the closest number to 80 without going over, and that also is 63. Take the one that's next to it. We didn't annex any zeros here, so I'll write it in the ones place. I'm always bad about forgetting to connect those, but we need to. Zero minus three, you can't do. 10 minus three is seven. Seven minus six is one. There is no number that will go into 17 without going over, and 17 is less than our divisor. So our remainder is 17 and our quotient is 10 plus one, which is 11. Don't forget to check it using multiplication and add your remainder at the end. Here is our practice word problem. 632 students are going on a field trip to the Truman Museum. If 36 students can fit on each bus, how many buses will they need to take, to take with them to transport all of the students to the museum? You can't leave any students back at the school because you don't have room on a bus. So think about that as you're figuring your answer. Go ahead and figure out what operation you need to use and work the problem and then check your answer and push play when you're ready. Did you write 18 buses? Let's see how we worked that one. So we have 632 students that we have to divide up into separate buses and we're dividing them into groups of 36 because 36 kids will fit on each bus. So I'm going to go ahead and divide 632 by 36. I did my doubling, check to make sure yours matches and nothing will go into six so we'll put an X over that. And then we're looking for the closest number to 63 which is 36. And we have an empty place value position, so we're going to annex a zero there. And the number to the left of 36 is a one, and we'll put our matching annexed zero next to that. So that connects, and we'll subtract. Two minus zero is two. Three minus six, you can't do it. Thirteen minus six is seven, and five minus three is two. So now we're looking for the closest number to 272 without going over, and that would be 144. We didn't have to annex a zero at all, so we'll take the four that's next to it and write it under the 10. We'll subtract. Two minus four, you can't do. 12 minus four is seven. Six minus four 
Set 12 minus 4 is not 7. 12 minus 4 is 8. I owe you a push up on that. I'm losing my mind. 6 minus 4 is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So now we have 128. The closest thing to 128 without going over is 72. We didn't have to annex any zeros on that. We'll take that 2 that's next to it and write it in the ones column. 8 minus 2 is 6, and 2 minus 7 you can't do, so 12 minus 7 is 5. That makes sense. Closest number to 56 without going over is 36. And we'll take the number next to 36, which is a 1, and write it in the 1's column. 6 minus 6 is 0, and 5 minus 3 is 2. Now, there's nothing that will go into 20 without going over, and 20 is less than our divisor of 36, so our remainder is 20. I always write the remainder off of the roof. I never write it over one of these rooms. The quotient, then, we know we're going to have a two-digit quotient, and we're going to add up 4, 5, 6, 7, using my touch point, and then we have a 1. So our answer is 17, remainder 20. And to check it, we multiply 17 times 36, and then add our remainder of 20 to get our dividend of 632. It's time to challenge yourself. Mr. Perkins is building a bookshelf to hold all of his books. He owns 8,723 books. If he can fit 179 books on each shelf, how many shelves will his bookshelf need to have in order to hold all of his books? Go ahead and work this problem out. Read it carefully. Make sure you understand it. In math land, you can't take books and just shove them on top of other books. If it says 179 books fit on a shelf, that's how many books will fit on a shelf. No more. Go ahead and show your work in your flip journal. Explain your answer and come back tomorrow ready to check your answer in class. I think I was going to say have fun with this. Finishing up, go ahead and review your learning goals. Is there any part of it that you're still having trouble with on this crazy division? Go ahead and write down if you're at a level 1, a 2, or a 3 in your learning. And then when you come in and take your mastery check tomorrow, you can see does the score you got on your mastery check match what you put down in your flip journal. Go ahead and write down any questions you still have and crazy division rocks. You've completed lesson 5-6 two digit quotients using crazy division. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.